Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to take three of Luthier's Question Time, episode one hundred and nine. Uh, that was that was not that was not fun. That was the epitome of not fun. I'm both late, which I despise, uh, with a steaming passion, and uh, uh, yeah, look like an empty. So I think what happened was at some point earlier in today, while I was uh, recording. A, a video, I managed to click the on air button, which is right next to, literally right next to the, uh, the record button on the, uh, uh, on the stream deck that we use. Here, yeah, let's have a look. So I think what I hit was on air rather than record, which then preemptively started the live stream. And uh, yes, everything's very dusty. Just is what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, that then was live for two or three hours, and then somehow in setting it, in, in refreshing it, because it didn't work, I managed to connect to the main YouTube channel, and that's not something I like doing. Anyway, hi, how are you? Uh, I'm in a bit of a mood now. <laughs> no. It is what it is. All right, so welcome to the chaos. Welcome to the carnage. Uh, I have now deleted the live stream that was scheduled for, t for Wednesday for the giveaway, so I'm gonna have to reschedule that for anybody that's uh, signed up for that. But uh, we're here. We're here, and the whole point of this is for me to answer your questions about guitar building. Uh, you know the drill at this point. If you send through a super chat, I'm both grateful and appreciative, and we'll guarantee an answer. If not, I do try and see what happens in the, uh, in, in the uh, normal chat as well as it gets going. Uh, I am sorry for all of the teasing and taunting and uh, false starts today, but uh, here we go. We've got Toby D, Alberto Enrique Guzman Fabra, what a name. Uh, he says finger error, absolutely. Uh, Big Unit Guitars, Kathy Thorne, hey, how you doing? Uh, Tia Buxton, Tia. Jam and Jesse, Jesse Scriver. Paul Needs, E.R. Webster. Graham Gibney, Wolf of Guitars, Howard Dixon, the Ginger Drum Tech, uh, a Stilgar, uh, Forrest Pfeiffer, Saren Hoff. We've got a bunch of names here that I don't actually recognize, which is great. Paul Cook, how are you? Uh, yeah, we're here, and it's all good. Uh, here's a question. Matt Hanley says, hey, Ben, I've completed two scratch builds so far, but I still find myself reaching for one of my factory guitars, PRS and the Mexican Strat, most of the time. Is this normal for builders? Uh, genuinely, my issue for the longest time... Okay, let's rephrase. My first few guitars absolutely sucked. Not necessarily from a building point of view, but from a uh, from a playability point of view and for most people unless you've gone to a guitar building school or something like that um, let me know if you've got one that you would recommend <coughs> um, if you haven't had hands on time or don't have a particular kind of mind getting a setup correct and perfect uh, first time round is it's not likely and if you've done the fretwork yourself for the first for the first time it's very 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 difficult so no most people will not reach for their first guitar or two as the as the main as a main squeeze as it were um, josh is in the background here josh do you do you play your first guitar very often i am one of the only people i know who does <laughs> but i, <laughs> I he does in a day with someone and they help me uh, redo the frets. There we go. He, he, <laughs> he went in, booked a day with somebody who helped him redo the frets, uh, and that's why it's now a playable guitar. Uh, Sam, same thing? Yeah, that's, that's just my mind. Oh, fine. You're, you're supposed to be helping me here, not disproving what I've got yeah, to say. He built, he built yours. I got mine He so, built yeah, his yeah. on a course here at the school, so it's, it's set up well. There we go. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, it's one of those things. I, I would suggest that... Uh, Nine times out of ten, the, the playability of the guitar is at issue when you first start. So, uh, uh, and the beautiful thing is, you can go back and set it up and set it up and set it up, uh, and get better and better and better. And the core instrument is fine, but uh, I think you'll you'll find that nut work, fret work, intonation, all that jazz. 
my my very first guitar which should be on the channel at some point soon i've got it upstairs it doesn't have any hardware um it's completely messed up in many many ways and it could be a fun video to restore it so uh, yeah we shall see okay now uh, Ritesh Shahi says, uh, why does electric guitar unplugged high strings make noise like unwanted fuzz? Is it due to low action, bad frame running or something else? Uh, almost certainly uh, it's to do with your setup, basically. Uh, so uh, yeah, again, low action, the action might be too low, you might have fret buzz, you might need to straighten the, the neck a little bit, uh, you might have too much relief, etc. There's uh, many many different things that could cause it up to and including a loose truss rod inside the guitar or uh, the string not being seated properly at the nut uh, you get a sitar style sound from the nut if the uh, nut slot instead of pointing down towards the strings has got a bit of a, a, a hump inside the slot if the slot is too wide your string could buzz uh, another thing that causes uh, buzzing and that sort of stuff on uh, on guitars is a loose washer uh, where your headstock has shrunk a little bit and uh, the the nut holding the tuner down isn't tight anymore there's a uh, many 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 different ways i've found loose screws on the back of pickups are rattling around i have found well you get the point you get the point there we go uh, toby d says great to see you feeling better ben i i was until this uh, aborted uh, live stream uh, process happened, but uh, hey, thank you very much. Um, no, life is uh, life is good. Uh, Rob Tootle says my first build is my go-to guitar now. That's awesome. Uh, Paul Cook says the factory guitars have 50 years more practice, if uh, if not more, uh, which is very 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 true. Okay, questions. Where's my phone? There's my phone. Should be on silent. Uh, Marsha J. Levine. Marsha, how you doing? Um, says that my boyfriend is going to give me some of his old guitar next to practice fret jobs on. Now I just need the tools. Um, see, as I'm trying to put this on silent, I get a bunch of messages through, of course. Uh, and uh, yeah, Max telling me I started the stream on the wrong channel. Sorry, Max. Uh, there we go. Fan fret or regular thingy, that's Saren Hoff. Uh, regular thingy, although fan frets are actually very, very cool and I find them particularly comfortable. Uh, from a commercial point of view, they're just more difficult to sell, really. Uh, Elbito Enrique Guzman Fabra says, I'm about to do my second fret job and it terrifies me because the first was not perfect. I am still getting better every single time I do fret work. Every single time I improve. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, bite the bullet, do it, and it'll get better and better and better. And one day you'll be talking to 105 people on a YouTube stream about fretwork, even though you feel that you are in no way capable of uh, being worth followed. I can't even talk anymore because uh, Sam over here is distracting the hell out of me with his uh, scratching away. Building a guitar for me, but still. It's the, do you know what's, why it's really grating? It's because you're so obviously trying to be quiet. It just makes it so much more obvious. <laughs> anyway, it's all fine. Carl Style, how are you? Um, Carl Style with the first super chat of the day. Thank you very much, dude. Uh, says, I'm starting an eight string multi-scale project leaning towards Fishman Fluence over slanted humbuckers, but would be interested in your perspective. Okay, so first of all, I absolutely love the sound that you get from Fishman Fluence. They are they're incredibly cool pickups, 100%. I am not 100% certain how, because of the design, the design of the Fluence pickups is, uh, it, it isn't a great big magnet or bunch of magnets with a coil of wire around it. It is, uh, the, the pickup itself is essentially the, uh, the magnetic kind of thing. There's a small coil involved. But uh, I'm not sure how wide the field is that encompasses the strings. If you've got a standard humbucker or a standard pickup on, on a standard guitar, your, your strings are on a straight guitar normally. 
directly over the poles. Uh, this isn't absolutely necessary because the magnet pushes out a, a sort of a spherical, um, maybe mushroom shaped. Sam, help me out here. Oh, he's ignoring me. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, now, if you put the, that humbucker on a slant, you can put the strings in between the two, and you've still got the string entirely in that magnetic field. On the Fishman Fluids, I don't know how strong the magnetic field is because it's a completely different construction of pickup. Of pick I would say, if you like the sound, go for it. If... Uh, uh, but I would run a test first. I would, what I would do is get another guitar, wire the, f the, the, the Fishman up to a, just a jack socket, and I would hold it above another guitar and see as you move it whether everything is being picked up as you would expect. Hold it at the right side, a uh, height above the strings, for example, of course. Uh, maybe put it on uh, a little, a few pieces of wood. Jury rig something up so you can see how that would react. Other than that, I'd say go for it. I, if you like the sound, that's uh, that's what happens. That's what that's what counts. Whew. Okay, Sean Thompson. Hi Ben. I routed the neck pocket of a bass build, and my cutter was a smaller radius than the radius of the curve of the corners at the end of the neck. So there are gaps on the corners. Is there a fix? Um, there's no. It's not necessary to have a fix. Uh, essentially. Let me rephrase this. A smaller radius than the radius of the curve at the corners at the end of the neck. So there are gaps in the corners, yes. Um, the gaps at the corners make, no, never mind. It's not important. Uh, if you can see it, that's more of an issue. But uh, uh, personally, I would have, let's <laughs> grab this old Tokai Super Strat again. Uh, the, the, the fretboard is rectangular. It, it isn't routed to, uh, follow the exact shape of the, of the, uh, of the neck uh, and the neck pocket in order to hide any potential gaps there. And there almost always are gaps there. That is really dirty underneath that fretboard. So, uh, so yeah, I, from a sound point of view, it's not a problem. Uh, from an aesthetic point of view, you might not like it. Uh, if you're going to be painting the neck, then you can quite easily inlay, say that's your neck pocket, you can cut a square out and inlay a fresh piece of wood and then hand carve it to fill the gap uh, on the neck itself. Or uh, same thing uh, within, the, within the, the pocket, you can put a new piece of wood in there. Uh, it's almost always more trouble than it's worth. But uh, yeah. It's one of those things. Uh, Owen, Owen Diaz says, uh, what, grit, what grit sandpaper do you use on a leveling beam for fret leveling? Uh, worn 320 grit paper. So I'll put some 320 on there and then uh, uh, use it to sand other things for a little while. Uh, 400 or 600 even would be slower but safer. So yeah, let's say 400 grit wet and dry paper. But um, it's one of those things. Uh, Ritesh Shahi with another one says, why is a shim used in a bolt-on guitar? Uh, most bolt-on instruments do not have any break angle built into the guitar, and most need a little bit of a break angle. Uh, Leo Fender was famous for uh, uh, collecting business cards from everybody he met and then cutting them up to use as shims in his guitars in the 50s and 60s. So, uh, so yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, okay, Mark Jennings says, Fretwork, <sighs> afternoon all. And uh, Big Unit with a super chat, thanks very much, Big Unit, uh, says, I bought a Les Paul that somebody had blasphemously put EMGs into. They also routed a battery box into the back. What's the best way to fill the hole? Go on, Sam, give me a... Give me a no body filler, that'd be nice. I've done that before. No, I've done that before. Uh, Bondo body filler. Um, so that is not a bad idea. That's from Sam F, who will be... Uh, don't, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> Sam F says you should use Bondo on 
uh, guitar repairs. Uh, so this is essentially a two-part car repair body filler. It is actually useful. I actually do have a pot of it at my home studio, and I, I do use it for guitar it repairs. Has lots of uses. It has many, many, many uses. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, I would uh, I would do that uh, if I was after a fairly quick. Uh, a fairly quick repair. The alternative is a chunk of wood, preferably mahogany, uh, to match. You will always have evidence of a repair. It is going to be, it is virtually impossible to hide a repair like that. So frankly, personally, I would just leave it. Um, it's that whole jazz metaphor. If you play a wrong note, uh, play it two or three more times, and then it's just jazz. It's, you meant it for it to happen. Uh, there's a battery box on there. Leave the battery box on there, and nobody would look twice at it. Take the battery box off, put a piece of mahogany in there, and then you've got the obvious outline of a piece of mahogany on there, and they're like, oh, somebody put a battery box on there, somebody else didn't like it, and they've repaired it, and this has devalued the guitar horrendously. Whereas a battery box just is what it is. Um, I'm more interested in why you think EMGs are blasphemous. Um, you know, they have their they have their uses. <laughs> I said this as Matt was walking through the building. He's like, yeah, I like EMGs. If they're good enough for James Hetfield. If they're good enough for James Hetfield, then you yeah, valid point. Ah. Uh, I was about to go off on one about uh, Headfield, but I'm not going <laughs> to. I don't want to start a fight. <laughs> I love him. Even I love him too. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, come on then. There we go. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm back on, back on track. Angel Song Guitars played his first bass, uh, or played their first bass, for years, tweaking it over the years, um, till they bought a six-string bass and then shared time. Uh, it's. I I am just beginning. The the guitar that I pick up every single day at the moment. Uh, bear in mind, my guitar lives in a room in which I have uh, a, a eight-year-old child and a twelve, thirteen-year-old child regularly running around and throwing things at each other. Um, it's a Squire Esquire Teletype. Uh, and uh, in the other room, there's a, um, a Fender Custom Shop Telecaster, sort of no caster. But at the moment, I am consciously spending as much time as humanly possible playing other people's guitars in order to inform my own guitar building. <coughs> and uh, and it's helping. I. I Genuinely, we're going to be launching some some new guitars, and experimenting and building some new things, and uh, they are going to be better than what we would have built a year ago, as a result. So it's an interesting question. Dum -da -dum. Dum -dum. Kevin Cox, hi Ben. I'm about to build a 12-string kit based on a Ricky, but the headstock is wrong. Can this be changed? Uh, absolutely, yes, you could. Um, Essentially, it depends on where the tuner positions are, or the tuner holes. If necessary, you can fill them with plugs of wood and then recut the headstock and re-drill. Uh, and then essentially you would need to put veneer front and back in order to hide the evidence of that repair. And coincidentally, that is another option for the aforementioned Les Paul uh, if you absolutely have to, you can repaint and uh, and paint the back a solid color. It's not what it's supposed to be, and it would also be an obvious repair. But uh, yeah, uh, you could do that. Uh, you could also find a nice big wide piece of mahogany veneer, glue that onto the back, and then do a full refinish, uh, nitro, cherry stain, and all. Uh, but that's far more work than it is worth, I would suggest. <coughs> 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 
Ritesh Shahi, what qualities do factory made guitars have which are superior to an individual one individually made by a luthier? It depends on the factory and the luthier. Uh, nowadays you can get some incredibly made guitars for a few hundred pounds. Uh, but it tends to be the fact that a luthier will, if they're any good, spend ten times longer on the final setup of the guitar. They will spend more money on the individual hardware pieces. They will spend more time tuning the, for example, choosing the correct pickups, uh, the absolute correct pickups. They will spend more time laboring over the frets and the fretwork, etc. So, frankly, a well-made, handmade guitar should be better than any factory-made guitar, period. It just should. It isn't always, but uh, that's just the fun of... Uh, <laughs> that's just the fun of what we've got right now. Hi Ben, don't read this. So of course I'm going to read, <laughs> not read it out loud. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my God, it's too long. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to read it right now. Uh, EMGs are just blasphemous on a list. Paul a QED. This is from Paul Needs, uh, and they're not even the right shape for door wedges. Uh, we've got an argument here. Um, Mark Jennings says, EMGs in my main workhorse Strat served me very well for years. Uh, Forrest Pfeiffer says, take the battery out and use the cavity for storing picks. Uh, that was, the, that was what, uh, at the tip of my tongue was uh, you can use the cavity to smuggle weed, but uh, I don't want to, uh, well, first of all, in many places it's not something that you need to smuggle anymore. Second of all, I'm not going to uh, promote breaking the law in any way, shape or form, so please don't uh, take me out of context there. Um, but, uh, you know, it has been known to happen. Uh, it has been known to happen in uh, strats that have been converted to hardtails but still had a cavity in the back. Uh, in any case... Queries, questions... Okay. Jules says, hey, Bun, the guitar is insane. I think I just need new metal powder soon. Uh, okay, so Jules has won and just taken delivery of my uh, great guitar, build-off guitar, and yes, my choice of finish was questionable. Uh, my entire shtick is, is fairly questionable, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but I'm really, really glad you're enjoying her. And uh, that's a very good point, Jules. Um, I drop me. In, well, we've already got your address. We should uh, we should genuinely send you the rest of the, the tub of stuff, and uh, if any does fall off, uh, T Fetch says crimson duplex? Question mark. Absolutely not. I I believe that no pleck machine will ever do the job as well or as quick as a competent luthier. Uh, Essentially, the whole pleck machine thing, you, I, I, I'm talking from a, a lack of experience, so I'm fully prepared to be uh, taught otherwise. But um, yeah, a pleck machine, you've still got a human having to load it in, take it out, etc., etc., etc. And I've never seen a plecked guitar set up to the same level that I set guitars up, period. Uh, therefore, no, not interested. Also, they're very expensive. <sighs> Forest Fiverr still has the first guitar they ever bought brand new. It cost around £100 in 1985. That's about 400 quid today. The difference in what I got then and what I could get for it now is £400. It's mind-blowing. Uh, it's cool. It's very, very cool. Uh, Ifax says, would you ever consider building your own amp? I absolutely would. Uh, although I would... Uh, I can follow a schematic, that's fine. Uh, actually originating uh, electronical designs, he says ironically. Uh, yeah, I don't have the brain for figuring out what's going where and why, but I can follow a, a, a diagram quite, quite 
handily. Um, <laughs> Mark Jennings says, is the word tone, is the word wone tood banned here then? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, Dave Lewis, why has Josh stained or painted his orange bench cookies? Uh, because Josh spends quite a lot of time uh, taking photographs of guitars uh, sat on bench cookies and the orange just pops far too much. So uh, yeah, he, uh, he, <laughs> he sat there quite happily for half an hour with a Sharpie and uh, Sharpied them out. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway. Soren Hoff says, I'm from Denmark. I want to go visit. Where can I have a night over? Drop us an email. We've got a, a friend of the family uh, called Julie who helps all of our students, if they require it, uh, to find accommodation, be it from one or two nights to three months or longer. I think uh, uh, Sam here still lives in the accommodation that he had when he was a three-month student and he's been working me f for me now. You've been working here for like 15 years or something? Yeah, 20, 30. Feels like a long time. About a year. <laughs> yeah? Around about, yeah. Okay, there we go. So, uh, yeah, we can help you find accommodation for, for, for a night and uh, we'd love to give you the tour and, and, and all of that jazz. Uh, it's what we do. Uh, Wolford Guitars saying Crimson Fano, something like that. Uh, Kevin Cox, hoping to see you this weekend at the Birmingham Guitar Show. I will be there. Uh, we have three completely different stands this year. We've got the Crimson Luthery School, where we're going to have two luthiers and uh, five or six workbenches, all set up so people can come and experience fret work, etc. Um, that's going to be fun. And on top of that, we've got uh, a load of uh, crimson tools, leveling files and stains and all of that jazz will be there. And then finally we are taking the Great Guitar Giveaway, uh, which is going to have about 25 or 30 uh, of the guitars that are currently on the Great Guitar Giveaway site. I will be sorting out a schedule though. Uh, people have spent previous guitar shows running around the show trying to find me while I've been running around the show trying to find people and guitars and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be at our stand, at the main Crimson stand, uh, all the time, but there will be a schedule and I will be coming back on a regular basis, uh, maybe on the hour every hour. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. It's going to be fun. And yes, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Now, David Oddie, how you doing with the Super Chat says, do you know my namesake's guitars? David Oddie, a son Luthiers from Devon. Uh, love your comments, uh, as I really should buy one one day. Uh, no, I have not. David Oddie and son Luthiers from Devon. I have not met them, but also I am diabolically bad with names. Um, so there we go. Although now uh, it will forever be... Uh, Associated with you. Twice a winner of a guitar from greatguitargiveaway.com. Woohoo. <sighs> Ritesh uh, says, how many hours does a good online full luthier course be? <laughs> um, I have no idea. We, I've never done one. I think that you could watch. I think that it should be essentially real time, 30 to 40 hours minimum but uh, it entirely depends on how you do things. Uh, the reality is, is that we spend a huge amount of time and effort making videos for YouTube, teaching people how to do stuff, but no matter how many of these videos you've watched, coming in in person and doing something with a human to steer you and guide you gets you to the final result uh, much faster and much safer than uh, than just watching videos or uh, doing an online sort of stuff. And trust me, we've you know given it a hell of a lot of thought. Uh, in person just is that much better. Uh, not to say I'm not going to do an online course at some point. It's kind of what we do already with YouTube. But uh, yeah, it's one of those.
sporadic amnesic says crimson make pickups as well as guitars and coffee we don't make the coffee it's blended to my specifications although yeah i've got uh, i've just got images of me just swimming in a vat of coffee beans like uh, what's that uh, duck um, duck yeah, ducktail something like that he collected money and had it in his vault and he went swimming in the in the gold coin somebody in the in the chat will know that's me in coffee beans if i was anywhere near a, a proper roastery uh, oh there we go i get the point uh guitars coffee it's only a matter of time before crimson makes amplifiers too maybe I am genuinely trying to uh, figure out how to uh, uh, simplify my life and consolidate things. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> uh, Rick Nelson came in with a super chat. Thank you very much, Rick. And he says, my tools, fantastic, but I have lots of unanswered emails over six weeks and DHL nearly got my $1,000 box stolen. A heads up because we love you. Feels sketchy. DHL are huge issues and if you've got unanswered emails over six weeks then frankly I need to fire somebody uh, or hopefully there's something going up with um, something going wrong with uh, <sighs> junk email etc <coughs> Rick I'm assuming that uh, your name here is the actual name on the emails uh, if you wouldn't mind, if it isn't, drop me an email to stream at crimsonguitars.com and I will personally chase this up and find out what's happened. Uh, now, the person who normally does do the emails has spent the last month uh, dealing with, unfortunately, if, if, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's a tip. So Josh here in the corner, he came to us after having spent a few years as a, in, in the building trade and you know, jobbing, job worksite carpenter etc and we now know that he can he can fit a door quite handily and when anything like that comes up it's hey Josh do you mind fitting a door you know you can do yeah or building and, uh, a guitar museum or building a guitar museum you're going to be building the wall in a guitar museum the same Ricky who does most of the emails came in and said well you know what ah, I'm really good at accounts I don't want to do accounts but I know accounts I've got that sort of a mind we're like oh really he spent a month doing accounts and uh, somebody else was asked to deal with the emails. Now, we, I was assured that that was being done properly. Uh, it appears that is not the case. Uh, so, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, Rick, I am very sorry. Drop me an email, stream at crimsonguitars.com, and I will chase it up and uh, ritualistically flay the offending party. HR? Oh, no, wait, I am HR. <laughs> uh, no, okay, there we go. It's always embarrassing when you get a, a comment like that, unfortunately. Um, tell you what, Sam, would you mind going and seeing if you can chase that up while we're still... technically open. Rick Nelson. Six weeks of unanswered emails. You see, if I delegate, if, if Sam then goes through and finds out, I know you're on your day off, <laughs> but uh, you know what? Um, yeah, if Sam does that, then uh, there's going to be less anger involved. Um, <sighs> Scrooge McDuck. That's it. Thank you, Ginger Drum Tech. And Mark Jennings and Sporadic Music and Beavers Christ. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Sergeant Sphinx says, Hey, Ben, I took your advice and went with the poplar for my base build. The lumber arrives tomorrow, and I'm both excited and anxious. It will be fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Go for it. Quibbs Guitar Workshop. Ask, ask your question again. Um, here we go. I need to restore three quarter inch by seven and one quarter inch by 17 inch piece of beautiful maple for a drop top. My bandsaw can only take up to six inches. What are my options now? Isn't using a table saw a bit sketchy? Yes, I would not use a table saw. 
I have done so in the past, but you know, I wouldn't. I would find a workshop near you who have uh, tools and machinery and stuff uh, who would be happy to do it for you. I have also taken off the upper guards of the bandsaw in order to get a few more inches of, uh, of cutting room. It is not advised. Uh, there's a reason there's a guard there and it's for safety, so this isn't something I'm advising you to do. My lawyers have just uh, said something in my ear here. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've been there. The alternative is you can use a table saw or a, or a circular saw or something like that to go slowly as deep as you can and do it in, in passes. So use the fence and go down with, I don't know, a half inch deep cut and then you know slowly take it down and then do that on both sides, go in and then cut by hand with a handsaw. And essentially those deep cuts on either side will guide the handsaw and keep it straight. And uh, it removes quite a lot of the work. Uh, an alternative is to well, dedicated, find somebody else who is willing to do it for you. Um, Lisa says, send another email to fix emails. Hmm, yes, Lisa. Uh, the difference is the stream email address is one that I'm monitoring and, uh, uh, well, not monitoring, monitoring, but uh, I'm expecting that email now and will then be able to uh, find out what the problem is. But, uh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Big unit guitars with a super chat says, can you buy router bits with longer length shafts? You can. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, most of the time you don't. Uh, Josh is off home, it's, uh, it's home time. Yeah, most of the time they're fairly standard, but there are, I have seen longer shaft ones. You wouldn't necessarily want it though, because it becomes less stable the further out they go. I would, if you want a deeper cut, I would use a standard shaft and just a longer fluted cutter, as it were. Sporadic amnesic with a super chat. Uh, ben, if, and it's a big if, I win the Jackson in the giveaway, can you write burn it somewhere on it? I absolutely can. That Jackson is supremely cool and incredibly low odds incredibly low odds right now. Uh, I, I don't know why, but nobody seems to want it. It has, um, it has sold 83 tickets out of 500. So uh, yeah, that's really sad. I should have kept it, genuinely. Anyhow, okay, Jules. Uh, Jewel says it is what it is. I don't think you're wrong. Uh, maybe more clear coat and then it should fit. Uh, very satisfied. Thanks again. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you how, uh, how I went through the thing. Lots of clear coat on the on that um, on the finish on my GGBO entry uh, made it feel very sort of muddy and clunky and it, it removed all of the the glint and shine from the Silicon carbide is the word I'm looking for. Um, hold on for a second. Dude, the fact that every single day at the end of your day after you're supposed to have gone home, you take the time to empty the dehumidifier, oh. you, the dehumidifiers, you seriously are awesome. I owe you a pint or, or two. Um, da, 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 da. Josh was not a plasterer. Um, no, he was a jobbing carpenter doing, you know, doors and walls and fittings and extensions and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. Basically anything, but I don't think plastering. Uh, although, I mean, plastering is so difficult. Um, yeah, absolutely crazy. Uh, Rick Nelson says, uh, no trouble, bro. I would have bought them anyway without the details, but for $1,700, and I'm planning another order in DHL as my guard's up real high. Um, I'm genuinely surprised that DHL screwed you over, or tried to, uh, or we're just, we're having huge issues, and thank you very much for being so understanding. Um, we are trying 
refresh. Shipping everywhere is an absolute nightmare. Uh, DHL, however, are one of the best uh, couriers we've ever worked with, and I've had no real issues with them, which is why we use them now for, for uh, the bulk of our stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, it is what it is. Uh, we are going to get to the uh, to the end of things, and uh, since you are about to place another order, um, uh, don't place that until I've given you a discount coupon as an apology. Uh, Dave Dave uh, says I put silicon carbide on a stick for sanding. Uh, felt a bit rough after that. Um, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a joke or not, but uh, I, it made me giggle. So there we go. Um, the serious thing is silicon carbide can you can actually use it essentially the powder to uh, if you impregnate a piece of wood or MDF or something like that or leather with a little bit of mineral oil and then sprinkle silicon carbide powder onto it it sticks and becomes embedded in the wood and essentially it's uh, a poor man's diamond file, something like that. Uh, so there we go. Uh, Ian Bonjour says, uh, through neck base bridge is too low. Can I shim two millimeters? You absolutely can. I would, uh, yes, I would, I have. I have done that before uh, myself. Neck break angles just, it's one of those things. Neck break angles, hey, Sophia. Don't get me started. Don't get her started. Uh, I've, I've, I've messed up the neck break angle many, many times, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so yes, you can put a, uh, you can put a, a shim under there. Uh, I would go brass or ebony or, yeah, absolutely fine. Any luck on that uh, there, Sam? Yeah, yeah, so um, they were all replied to, so it's a good chance it may have just ended up with junk <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, Rick. Um, yeah, Rick. That sounded very <laughs> abrasive. Uh, apparently, the yeah at the end of January, there was a bit of a delay. But we replied on this the sixth uh, of January, fifth of January, first of Feb, third of Feb, and the seventh of February. Um, but it all appears to be going into your junk folder, uh, according to these guys, or or something. Um, but uh, if you could check into that and, and have a look as well, we'll see how it goes. Second note it says, for what it's worth, I've shipped a lot of music related items, guitars, pedals, amps, etc., for the last 18 months, and the only UK courier I've really had no issue with is APC. Lol. Um, have a good one. I'd, well, <laughs> you message me. Okay, cool. um, that requires some, some explanation, doesn't it? It does, kind of. Yeah, I'm talking about I'm doing. Sure think uh, of a, a, a not very rude comment. Yeah, there's, there's no way to not. Sophia has spent. Uh, oh, guys, okay, watch the live stream. Watch the what's on the bench. Uh, we've got two. Uh, we've got two people in on a uh, on a short course doing uh, guitar setup and repair, etc. They just happen to um, to be Elvarez guitars, and uh, I'm taking them out to dinner tonight. And since Sophia will, has spent the entire day, the entire day today, uh, helping them and teaching them, I invited her along too. I think, however, she's got other plans. She's trying to find a, a new place to live and thus pip young Sam here to the post, because uh, Sam's also looking for a new place to live. So it's like, you know, fight. Um, but anyway, that, yeah, that did require a little bit of explanation. I'm, I'm a, you know, predominantly happily married person, and Sophia happens to be a raging homosexual. So, um, yeah. Can I put my foot in it anymore? Not really. No? Maybe some stars. <laughs> I've got nothing. I can't. Okay. 
Um, T Fetch says, will you accept Bitcoin on Great Guitar Giveaway? Uh, <laughs> at the moment, no. I would consider it. I've got no issue with Bitcoin. Uh, it's a bit volatile. But um, I'm not actually sure what the process would be getting it on there. Um, I, will, I will ask Tom. There we go. Alrighty, Goth Rider Creations. Considering the prices of timber still, do you think there would be much interest for engineered pine turn into body blanks? I have a load, but not sure what you do. Uh, engineered pine. That's essentially. Yeah, I'm not. I've. I don't actually know what that is. Uh, I think that alternative materials are absolutely to be encouraged. I think that pine guitars are becoming uh, more in vogue. Hell, the first Telecasters back in the 50s were made out of pine uh, and thinner than they currently are as well, uh, just for interest's sake. Um, Fano? Who's, who's the... Is it Fano making pine guitars right now? No, it's not. It's... Uh, uh, well, let me know in the comments below. I can't remember the name of the damn company now. But anyway, pine guitars are okay. As long as you don't want a perfect finish. If you want something that looks beat up and scruffed and scratched and will dent, if you look at it sideways, yeah, use pine. Okay. Peter Israelson. Hi, Peter. Uh, says, uh, and Peter's a, a member of our... Uh, YouTube channel as well. Hi Ben, I have an old 12 string Hofner 457 President Thin Line that hasn't had 12 strings for years. Sam here just, uh, his jaw just dropped. Uh, not sure I dare to put all the strings back on it. Can I check the neck for, neck for strength in any way? Yes, I mean you could send it to us and donate it to the museum. <laughs> uh, sounds like an awesome guitar. Uh, no. And yes, basically, it was designed for 12 strings. It should have 12 strings on it. Uh, there are there are low... I'm fairly sure that you can buy strings that are low tension, thus put less pressure on the guitar. But uh, the easiest way is to just get a standard set of 12 strings and uh, put them on as normal, but down tune the guitar to, I don't know, say two, two and a half semitones, something lower than it should be, and then just sit and play it low and watch and see what happens. And then after two or three weeks, bring it up a semitone, uh, thus slowly uh, increasing the tension. And uh, that will get you to a point where you're not shocking the wood uh, in any way, but uh, yeah, you should be good. Now, somebody mentioned UPS. DHL and UPS are two I really dislike. That's Dave Lewis. UPS, I'm not surprised about. They are universally considered as pieces of shit. That's curious. No, they're, they're just bad. But, um, uh, yeah. I'm surprised about the DHL hate. Anyway, Ape Song says, put 12 strings on, but tune down a step and see how it reacts before eventually tuning up to normal. Great minds. Great minds, my friend. Uh, old Man Zen, hi Ben, I'm about to cop a leaf. Caps to draw your attention. Uh, my first guitar, and I was wondering if you had any tips. I've watched your builds with it, but I wondered if you have any extra tips. Uh, everything I've said in the videos is probably, uh, it just needs everything. If you want a perfect finish, then, Apply the copper leaf over a high gloss lacquer uh, that's perfectly finished. Preparation is absolute key. If you're not after perfect finish, then just go for it. The Make sure that you don't buy budget uh, size. You want to go to a proper sign writers and get actual oil size. Amazon sells something called gold leaf size and it's literally just watered down PVA. Doesn't work, it's not worth it. Uh, it's not the same thing. So yes, whatever you are, using use proper the proper material and we'll go from there 
Um, hold on for a second, Sam. Would you mind checking that the uh, Alvarez guys are okay uh, next door? Uh, I'm aware that I'm running a little bit late at this point. Uh, Become a brave, verified creator so that I can donate BAT. That's from T-Fetch. Uh, how would I do that? OK. OK, Goth Rider Creations. Engineered timber is loads of one-inch strips glued together. Yeah, I think that would be absolutely fine. Uh, Paul Cook says there are a couple of current Fender American Pro 2 Strats and Teddies and Pine Bodies. I've seen those actually. Uh, they look okay. Second note says I'll see yous at the guitar show on the weekend. Hopefully the parking is a little better at the new venue, lol. The old venue burnt down, which is sad. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Okay. Uh, would a Zero Cote neck really need a truss rod? Yes. Every single neck on the entire planet needs a truss rod. Uh, the way that I want my setup to be is not going to be the way you want your setup to be necessarily and having the ability to adjust the relief on a neck is in my mind absolutely essential okay uh, tfetch says see brave browser I do actually use the brave browser um, but uh, I didn't realize you could be a brave verified creator uh, but uh, yeah I'll check that out uh, there we go. All right, cool. Well, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a day because we have been going for an hour at this point. Um, if you have any more questions, ask them right away, and uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. Uh, Old Man Zed says thanks, no worries. Uh, Angel Song Guitar says I wonder if copper coat would make a nice finish. It's a marine bottom coat product. Anything that has the word bottom coat in its name just has to be experimented with, basically, in my opinion. Hi, Ben. When will the Crimson Branded Workshop leathers be available on the store, please? Soon? Soon. There's a lot going on at the moment. Um, Dave Lewis says DHL are using too many drivers that don't speak any English that dump deliveries at addresses that don't in any way resemble the destination address. Um, that is a, a problem. That is a problem if it is a problem. The Ginger Drum Tech Ben, being on the road for 30 years with various bands, I noticed the guys with vintage guitars, lighter wood, had problems with necks bending on tour. Those with dark woods don't. Are new guitars better? Are new guitars better? New guitars are potentially more stable. New guitars have generally got a an uncompromised finish, i.e. they are letting in and releasing less moisture uh, than, you know, for example, I bought a, I bought for the museum a 1961 Gibson Melody Maker and you know it's lost a lot of actual finish around the thing and yes if it's in a damp environment it will take on more moisture and it will then lose moisture and, it, and it'll move it'll move it just is the way it goes uh, that being said many 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 new guitars these days are being built with that already done thank you sam uh, so potentially the other thing to say is new guitars would have um carbon fiber stiffening rods in there so there we go angel song guitar says it's epoxy and copper powder then yes it would we've got a, a gibson sg faded that uh, we bought for the great guitar giveaway site and i decided to paint it with copper paint which is exactly that it's epoxy mixed with copper powder and uh, unfortunately our issue here is that uh, it needs to be in a very warm needs to be applied in a warm spray booth and of course we started doing it when it was very very cold so there we go uh, okay big unit guitars Ben I've noticed that the fret slot cleaning saws look different from the two-sided saw you have any reason for that change um, suppliers 
basically uh, it's very 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 difficult to get fret slot thinning saws at the moment like inordinately difficult um, so yeah it's one of those things Uh, no marsh, a small crack inside the truss rod access, nothing to worry about. That's, uh, you've got a, a thin amount of wood bridging over the truss rod that uh, often gets damaged. It's, it's not an issue. Uh, okay, everybody. Uh, Howard Dixon says, is, a bottom, coat, is, is a, a bottom coat better than thermal pants? I, I think maybe. Uh, ben, can we see your 61 Melody Maker, please? That's Dave Lewis. Sam, would you mind? I'm not going to complain about that. I didn't think you would. You love that guitar. You wouldn't put it down um, when, I, when I walked in with that. Uh, I had to alter the TR a tiny amount every spring, autumn, uh, the truss rod, every spring or autumn on my PRS CU22. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Don't drop it. <laughs> this is <coughs> so short scale length student guitar. Basically, my first vintage Fender I bought was a Music Master Two with a <coughs> with a twenty two inch scale length. I think this is twenty two and a half. And for the museum, uh, he says, looking over at Sam, who nods his head carefully. Uh, the, f the first thing that you're going to see in the museum, uh, potentially, is going to be uh, essentially a, a couple of 50s or 60s, 60s, early 60s student guitar models with a mail order student guitar amp. Uh, and uh, it, it just, uh, yeah, it appeals to me. It appeals to me greatly. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Cracked finish. Missing a lot of finish around the edge, and uh, and it's an amazing guitar, and I love it. Love it, I love it, I love it. So, so yeah. There we go. No, I'm happy to stand here with the guitar. Leave me alone, Sam. Ah, it's out of tune. Anyway. Fine, I'm going to end on this question. Graham Gibney says, I want to carve an image into a body with a contrasting finish behind it. Should I finish the guitar and then carve the image? Or carve the image before applying any finish? Aha. <sighs> there, is no, there is no right answer. Either of them would work. So, so yeah, either. Uh, basically, I've done it in the past where I have uh, just had a standard mahogany body. In fact, the one I'm thinking about was a cherry body, or a cherry top at least. And I engraved a load of cherry flowers and cherry, cherry tree leaves and things like that into it. And then I went in after the fact and painted silver paint in there, I think and then sanded the excess away and dusted it and it was fine. So that's the, the quicker way of doing it. The alternative is something that you would do for sign writing or business card making potentially, where you uh, laser through from one layer into another. And I like the idea of, uh, for example, a, uh, an aluminium top with uh, uh, black acrylic on the inside. Um, that you carve through, that could be a very cool look. In fact, it's something that I would seriously consider doing on a guitar at some point. Uh, on a guitar I'm building at some point. So, yeah, you should do it. Finally, Paul Needs says, uh, first thing should be a frying pan reproduction. I agree. Okay, there we go. Uh, ben Dunsey at Dunsey's World Guitar World YouTube channel. Uh, that's from Dave Lewis. I said I was going to go. I'm going to go. Dimitri. Hi, Ben. Hello, everybody. Hey, Dimitri. How are you doing? Uh, okay. People, have a fantastic evening. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with how late we started and uh, for being so cool. 
I will see you. I will see you next week, if not sooner.